Hi folks, Toad from visordown.com here, bringing you our real world, very real world in fact, because of the amount of riding that we can actually do, uh, sort of living with review of Kawasaki's new 2020 ZH2. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit specifically about this bike that's in front of me here and how much it is. So this is the metallic matte carbon finished bike with the uh, metallic flat black paint. And it's got this kind of like slinky looking uh, metallic frame as well. Uh, this bike on the road is listed at 15149, uh, which, and they are in dealers now, whenever they reopen, you can go and jump on one and have a test ride. Uh, or put your, your name down for a PCP deal on one. There is another bike that Kawasaki do as well. There's a bit of variation between the different colours, but the main difference between the two big sort of uh, models of the ZH2 is there's this bike, which is the standard ZH2, and there's also the ZH2 Performance, which has got a slightly different screen, a few other trinkets, but the main thing is it's got Akrapovich end can, which looks absolutely lovely, and I'm sure will make it sound very nice indeed. I just want to outline a few key points about this bike, which I think make it really, really quite special. If we look at the competition in the sort of the around the 200 brake horsepower sort of super naked category, so let's pick two of the big players in that category. Um, we've got the new Ducati Street Fighter V4 uh, and the Aprilia Tuono, and then let's say the M MT10 SP from Yamaha, who are there all there or thereabouts. The Ducati Street Fighter V4, 208 horsepower, so it's got around about eight horsepower more than the ZH2 comes in at the base bike is 17,595. So that's, yeah, there are there, about a couple of grand more than the ZH2. If you want to go for the S version of the Street Fighter V4, which is the one with all the trick, Olin, ZC, uh, semi-active suspension and so on and so forth, uh, that will set you back 19,795, which is quite a lot of money. There are super bikes out there, sports bikes that have got just the same toys as that, that are, cheaper than that. Uh, we've also then got the Chiono. So the Chiono uh, V4 1100 factory is 175 horsepower and that comes in at 17,199. And you can start, see, start to see my train of thought here. And then even, even the MT-10 SP, which is the pinnacle of the Yamaha Hyper Naked range and has been out for a good number of years now, that's only just 14,749. So it's only just a little bit cheaper than the 200 horsepower ZH2. It's not it's just something that's been playing on my mind is like, how much good value is this thing? If you really wanted to experience Kawasaki's supercharged engine, there's probably not a cheaper or better time to do it. So these are really strange times that we're living in at the minute, and we're all having to adapt to a different set of rules and how we live our lives, how we go shopping, how we spend time with our friends. And it's all very strange and unusual and stressful for everybody, including families and the young and the old. During that time, a lot of people will turn to their, their two-wheeled motorcycle and their, 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 you know, their classic project as a method of letting out some of that tension. And sadly, we can't quite do that at the moment because the rules still dictate that pleasure riding or riding in groups and so on and so forth is, for now, not going to happen. The way that I've been riding this bike, though, has been because I only have a bike as my form of transport. I don't have a car license and I don't have access to a car. So for me to get around and still nip to the shops or go and drop off some medicines to some family members who've been self-isolating, it's been a real godsend to me to have this in my garage. And when Kawasaki said, oh, we've got a ZH2 for you if you can collect it before the lockdown started and you know you can keep it till August, I thought, yeah, that would be great. But actually, I'm going to be just riding around town for the foreseeable future. How useful is it actually going to be? Or how easy is it going to actually be just to ride around? And for a 200 horsepower sports bike without a fairing, which is effectively what it is, you would think it would be such an animal to ride and you would think it would be so belligerent around town and need so much work to ride slowly, but it absolutely doesn't. It is such a compliant beast. It's so easy to ride. It's so comfortable as well. I was shocked by the comfort levels, but I'll come back onto that in a, in a, in a bit. Uh, while it isn't, you know, the normal type of hero content that we go for on a visor down review where we're, you know, riding out and about in the countryside. Actually, to be honest with you, it's really good to learn what a bike is like in the confines of the city centre and the Sainsbury's car park or Tesco or wherever, because that's where a lot of bikes spend their time. You only remember the good trips down the B road, but for the rest of the time, you're probably just plodding through town. So to start the real world review, I'm just gonna talk about the engine of the bike first and foremost. So it is a, a H2 sports bike derived, uh, 1000cc supercharged engine. We all know that. This 
In this state of tune, in this bike, it has got just under 200 horsepower. So 200 PS or 197 horsepower. It also produces, and this is another way that Kawasaki have sort of tweaked this bike over the HT fully fed sports bike. So it is a really, really very torquey engine. And Kawasaki have not just taken the engine out of the HG sports bike and dropped it into this thing. They have fully given it a proper going over. So the bottom end of this is so fat and so wide that you almost never be able to seem to get yourself out of it. Wherever you are and whatever gear you're in, you're always right in the fat of the torque curve, it feels. And it's not like the HG sports bike didn't feel torquey or felt weak in the bottom end. It didn't, it was phenomenal, but this is even better. So they've fattened up the bottom end and they've made it such a more usable and such a more chunky motor. You can be ever so, ever so lazy with gear shifts. I mean, you can go around some really, really tight 90 degree corners just riding around town uh, in third gear and just open the throttle and the bike will just ever so smoothly and, and nicely just pull away from the corner without any kind of grumble whatsoever. And again, you have to then remind yourself that you're riding something that's got 200 horsepower because it is just so usable in the everyday situation. When you get out of the uh, town centre and you get onto stretch of dual carriageway, and I've got to admit, I have stretched its legs a couple of times on the dual carriageway down to the, uh, the superstore at the end of the A444 here in Coventry. It is just, oh, it's mind boggling, the acceleration of this thing. The HG sports bike, if you've ridden one, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, you need to get yourself on one for a test ride because they are phenomenal. But that is a super, super hyper quick bike in terms of acceleration all the way to 170 miles an hour. There is very little on the road that can beat it. In fact, I don't think there's anything that can beat it. And what they've done when they've created the, the ZH2 and they've took the fairing off it and it's more short and it's more squat and it's got a different swing arm, it just feels even quicker. So this bike actually loses out about 30 horsepower um, when compared to the Z, uh, to the H2 sports bike. But because it's so short and it's so squat and it's so in your face, you don't, you don't miss any of the extra horsepower. It still feels ballistically quick. I'm certain that this would have 170, 180 miles an hour on the cards if we took it to Brunton Thorpe, which we're gonna look to do once it's ran in and also once all these restrictions have been lifted. Talking about living with the bike, one of the downsides of a supercharged bike is they do tend to be a bit thirsty. I noticed it with the H2 sports bike when I had that and even the H2 SXSE, which is Kawasaki's supercharged sports tourer. I'd think of it more as an everyday H2. Um, but yeah, that, that, that is what they are. All thirsty bikes and it's all to do with the way that the supercharger's forcing the air into the engine. The pressure exponentially increases as the, the revs increase and the fuel and the air mixture going in. And yeah, it's a bit thirsty. This is, I've done about 200 miles on this and that's taken me two tanks of fuel and I'm pretty much almost empty. So from there you can work out the M MPG. To its credit, it is brand spanking new. It had like, I think 60 or 70 miles on it when I collected it and it's now got sort of 260. Um, so the engine is still really, really tight and it's got the original oil in it when, from when the engine was actually manufactured and constructed. So once you take that out and the engine's got a, few, a couple more thousand miles on its bores, it will start to loosen up and the MPG will start to come down quite considerably. I hope. Uh, we'll keep a post on that because like I said, we've got it until August. So there's going to be a lot more testing that I can do and I'll do some proper accurate brim to brim uh, mile per gallon measures just to make sure we know exactly where it's at. So onto the comfort, which is another sort of real world thing that we, we you know, you think about when you're buying a bike that you're going to ride a lot, you think about how comfortable it is going to be. Um, and again, it's, it's really surprising. It, this is, if you're a fan of the Kawasaki Z900 or even the Z650, you will get on this and you will get on with it straight away. The riding position, the ergonomics are all very, very familiar. Um, you can really feel the bloodline and the DNA of the Z family coming up from the sort of the Z125, because I've ridden that as well, and that feels almost similar to this, to be honest, when you sat on it, the Z650 and the Z900, you can kind of feel it all, all in there somewhere. It's just in this, it's hidden behind a 200 horsepower engine and an all-up weight of about 230 kilograms if it's ready to ride. That said, it's not cumbersome, really. It's a bit top heavy, especially with a full tank of fuel in it. It does get a little bit top heavy, but that's just because to get all the supercharged gubbings and the airbox all sorted out for this particular engine, the engine does have to be sort of, in effect, it's quite tall. 
Um, you don't notice it when you're going along. The only time you do notice it is sometimes when you're manu manually handling it. You can just feel that the centre of the gravity of the bike, where on a sports bike or something like that, it'd be a, a, the centre of gravity would be a little bit lower down. This it is right up top. Riding around town, filtering through traffic, all of those things, not an issue whatsoever. It's so easy to ride, and it's you know it's fairly wide. Um, but it has no trouble filtering whatsoever and once you get out in, uh, to the front of the traffic you're just going to leave them all behind at the lights anyway so it's it's a really pleasurable thing uh, even just riding around town on it and just you know nip into the shops still feels like a, a bit of an event on this because you don't have to hammer the hell out of the engine to, to, to make it fun because all the torque is there from all the way down in the rev range it's just it's fun from tick over without you having to explore the red line all the time which is something that I really find enjoyable. As I just mentioned, it's 239 kilograms ready to ride, so it's not it's not light, but it's, it's you know it's probably one of the heaviest uh, super nakeds or hyper nakeds on the market that you can go out and buy. I'm five foot seven. It's got an 830 millimeter seat height, and I don't struggle riding it. Um, but if you're much shorter than me, you might find it a bit of a problem. But you're thinking it's an 830 millimeter seat, so that's fine. But it's not the step over of the seat is quite wide. Um, so I can just about sort of tippy toe it down, um, but to get a fat, flat foot on the floor, I do have to lean the bike over. Suspension wise on this bike, we've got a very familiar setup to most riders. We've got the uh, separate function big piston forks from Showa, uh, which are fully adjustable. And there is a, a fully adjustable Showa um, cartridge uh, rear shock as well. Um, because I'm riding around town, I've actually softened it up a little bit at the front end and at the back end because I just wanted to see how much more comfortable it would be just with a little bit sort of let, let go out of the suspension. It wasn't quite so tense. And it is really comfy and it still doesn't dive or wallow too much. It just soaks up the potholes, which are the blight of the country at the moment, but I don't see that getting fixed anytime soon. Um, it's just softened that up. It's made it a little bit more compliant and a little bit more comfortable. You can still push on, but as soon as this all gets cracking and we can start riding bikes again, I'm probably going to be sort of tweaking it back up uh, to where the factory settings were just to make it a little bit more supportive for when I want to go for a blast or take it on a tractor or something like that. Um, but other than that, it's, it's an exceptionally comfy bike. And like I said, it just goes back to the fact that it just feels to me like a big beefed up, you know, it's like a Z900 on steroids effectively. And that is a bike that you can ride long distances on. Um, so if you're, you're looking at this and you're thinking you're going to be riding it every day and you want something that's going to be comfortable this would be a perfect bike in fact i'd say it goes far as to say it'd, it'd be great for doing some touring on if it wasn't for the fact that you're only going to get about 130 140 miles to a tank So there we have, that's what it's like to live with the Kawasaki ZH2 on a proper day-to-day -day basis without going crazy and doing all the knee down skids and wheelies that, that you kind of you want to do on a bike and just living with it in the re real world. I think the, the main thing that I'll take away from um, riding it and riding it in the manner that I have is just how surprisingly easy it is to get along with. Um, don't look at the ZH2 and think that it's going to be this animal or a bit of a beast and that it's going to be you, it's going to be riding you all the time not the other way around. That's not the case at all. It's an absolute puppy and it will only go ballistic if you absolutely poke it with a stick. Um, so once the dealerships get open we'll let you know on visordown.com. I suggest that every single one of you gets down to a Kawasaki dealer and gives one a go because it's bloody good fun. If you've liked this video, please don't forget to hit like and subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Also, hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future Visor Down comment. And for all the best news, reviews and motorcycle features, please head over to visordown.com. Thank you.